All right, Pac, we have dusted off the Wolfden University textbooks and we are back with a harness racing betting lecture based on the Inter-Dominion heats and finals at Albion Park in Brisbane. Tonight's lecture is based on round two of the heats. Ryan Spice, who was a harness racing analyst and punter and also a complete legend, has taken the time out of his daily life to fly to Sydney to give us all a lecture on the great game of trotting and pacing. We will learn, we will bet, and most importantly, have a good time. Let's go. All right, students, welcome to Wolfden University. Where would you rather be? The summer sun is beating in here at the Den. We've got Inter-Dominion finals night. We've got keen students. We've got Professor Ryan Spice here to get us going. He's come down from Brizzy. Um, he's a bit sick, but that didn't stop him. We really appreciate the effort you've gone to. And you're here simply because you really care about harness racing and you want to um, spread the word. So thank you for coming down. Um, we've got student Kingsley over there. Welcome. Thank you. We've got student Trill Mitt. And, hello, hello. Uh, Student Junior Matt next to me. Briefly describe what the, what the Inter Dominion is for us. So the Inter is a race series that is meant to produce one time of the year all the best horses from around Australia and the both islands of New Zealand are to come together to race for the sort of the biggest kitty in racing. That's the, mm -hmm. the generic concept. Um, it's a race that's got a hundred years of history. Mm. Um, some of our absolute best horses have won the series. I'm the Mighty Queen won three. Um, Our Sir Vancelot won three into Dominions, and one of the all-time greats, Blacks a Fake, he won four. Mm. Um, so to have a as a owner, trainer, or driver, it really is the pinnacle. Um, if you've owned an Inter Dominion winner, it's it's pretty special. Yeah, and uh, it's the top of the tree in my opinion. Um, and everyone's trying to climb it. Yeah, so and it needs a bit more attention, a bit more love and better prize money. We'll talk about that later. But let's talk about how the Inter Dominion actually works. So there's three nights of heats and a final. Tonight is round two of the heats. I'll let you take it over from there. Yeah, so the series runs over a two-week period. We run three heats in the first week, usually something like Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday or... Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, just depending on the, the host state. Um, so, yeah, three runs in the first week. It's absolutely brutal. And then you're back up the week later for the grand final. So it's really a chess game for the trainers and the drivers to manage their horses through to get enough points through the first three rounds of the heats and to make the final still in good shape. You know, you don't want three gut busters mm -hmm. in the heats because you come to the final the week after and you'll be totally spent. Um, you want to sneak through... But do the job, win the heats when you can, and uh, qualify for the final in the best shape possible. So, Ryan, in the in the third night, do you find that horses have qualified, and they're obviously they're good horses, so they'd be going around pretty short. Would you would you stay out of those ones? Yeah, look, in the the third night of heats, if, I, if there's a horse that's qualified comfortably and then they've drawn poorly, that's when I'd probably uh, stay out. Mm. And how right? does the point system work? How, when are you when have you qualified comfortably? Uh, so I think on night one we had uh, the mile heats and they actually split them into four for the paces and three for the trotters, whereas the next two nights it's three for the paces and two for the trotters. So um, I think it's like 16 points for first uh, and these the heats following through. So if you've run two top three placings in the first two nights, you'd be very stiff to miss out on the floor. Sure, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to ask you as well, uh, Ryan, so they're running – Four times in two weeks, which is a hell of a lot. Horses um, are often well backed uh, in horse racing if they're backing up sort of four or five days, but then they'll have a break, they'll do it once. Occasionally they'll back up twice, seven days. But I find that the younger horses sort of struggle um, to cope with those backups of seven days. Does the same apply? The younger ones don't do as well, but the, the, the old hardened ones might, might be going well come day four if they make the final. Yeah, certainly two and three year olds. You would you don't put them through a series like this, that's for sure. So, but once they're fully mature, from four years and older, um, standard breds actually thrive on the work. Most of them. Yeah. Um, and we see like sires like Better's Delight kind of come to the fore here. Um, their horses are just you know he's he's left a really big impression on the on the breed and those and Better's Delight horses are just staying animals and and they often thrive through a series like this. And just with the regular racing, is do, do the horses back up like seven days very often? And is that a sort of 
something that you look for when you're when you're doing your form? Yeah, absolutely. It's very, very normal. Your normal pattern of racing would be that you're backing up week to week. Yeah. Yep. Um, some, some horses will have two starts in a week, for sure. Um, some trainers over a fortnight period that, you know, a horse will easily have three starts. Just depends. But backing up way more frequently um, than the gallopers is really common. It's nothing for and you easily to have 40 starts in the year. And do you keep records on those sort of things? Is there a database or somewhere where you can go to to run queries to sort of, you know? No, we're, we're flying blind in harness racing. Okay. It's, it's all manual and all old yeah. school. Unless you're keeping your own database, of course. Yeah. How is the barrier barrier draw done for these heats and any and the final? Obviously, barriers are a huge thing in harness racing. Yeah, barriers are, are all important. You know, everyone's trying to claim the the one marble. You know, the inside draw. It's it's statistically the best barrier you can possibly get. Um, it's all random barrier draw, um, and the fields are random ca- allocated randomly throughout the heats as well. So you could actually be unlucky enough to race, say, for instance. Hot and treacherous. He had to race Leap to Fame on round heat night one. He's got him again tonight. And, you know, if he, if he bumped into him again in the third round, it would be uh, mighty unlucky. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And you probably get bored of answering this question, but can you explain the difference between paces, paces and trotters? Yeah, that's, that's pretty easy. Um, one way that I've been told, the easiest way to describe it is that trotters are diagonally gated, so their opposite legs are working together. Whereas, so that's for the trotters and paces are laterally gated. So their legs on the same side are working together. How many bookies up there at Albion Park tonight, you reckon? Uh, There's a young fella there by the name of Ben Cray. He'll be standing. (laughs) Uh, He actually had a second little outlet out in the public and the stand on Saturday night. So that was, uh, or Friday night. So that was really refreshing. Yeah, he, he's there normally none because he messaged me on the den and said there was one. So I was just yeah. checking. I thought yeah, one on Needed uh, Dominion, not come on. Shout so out to he's, he, he's got the uh, the sole license to uh, put up 110 percent and take everyone on. Look, uh, sadly, a bookmaking ring is a thing of the past. Yeah, it and, is. Uh, we're lucky if the EBT terminals are turned on. Yeah. How good was Harold Park rich in the day? So good. I was bringing back a lot of memories. That's what I was saying to Ryan today. Is that I, was, I really love harness racing back in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s. I used to go there on a Tuesday, yeah. about 50 people there. PVL would be wandering around because he, he was the boss then. And, uh, yeah, great times. We've had some great times. It was there. pumping though, wasn't it? Pumped. Used John Kennedy pump. was the biggest bookie yeah. Um, yeah. when I first started in the 90s. Great thing about tonight, Ryan, is that all the best trotters and paces are lined up through the different heats. We don't really get that in horse racing. And I really like that about tonight, that you, got, you get to see the stars in different races – yeah, and, you, and we get to see them, you know, multiple times in a short space of time mm. as well. Yeah, it's really good. Um, I think without a doubt, though, the the bottom end of both the pacing and the trotting heats, it's lacking a lot of depth. You know, there's the the half a dozen solid contenders and then it does fall away. Um, and, you know, that's got a lot to do with the, the prize money structure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, if we can ever get the series back up to... Well over a million dollars for, for both finals. Uh, we'll see a renaissance of the series. Yeah, unreal. So let's roll straight into talking about how you do the betting. So, and before you do that, I just want to say that the whole idea of Wolf Den University is that people who watch this and us as students come away with a bit of a better idea of how to bet on a particular code. And tonight it's harness racing. So you've done two things. Well, you're, you're going to tell us a bit about how you bet, which is fantastic. But then you've also put together a very simple betting strategy for us tonight and it's it's based on a point system and we'll talk about that after you've given us a bit of a rundown of how you do the betting yourself so over to you and your betting um i'm pretty old school in the sense that you know i do all the form manually i suppose Mm -hmm. um we've got a wonderful website in harness racing called harness.org.au yep everything you want is there all the race replays all the horses form all the fields so if you're ever interested to uh, to dive a bit deeper, harness.org is your place. Um, I like to just peruse the actual fields to start with, see who's racing who um, and what the initial drivers are listed down for each individual horses, who's drawn where. But once I sink my teeth into a, a meeting, I really like to make sure that I've watched or I've committed to memory a horse's last five starts. So I've got a, you know, I can look at a horse's form, go through it, See, remember, oh, that, that start was two weeks ago. They sat three fence and were held up for a run. So if I've been able to do that for each and every runner, I feel like I've covered my bases mm-hmm. and I'm, uh, I'm ready to bet. And what about sectional times in 
pacing and trotting? Is it a big thing? It's a huge thing in racing. How do you handle them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, analyzing the the race shape, the race tempo, and what horses how they've um, how they've performed is a big thing. We're really lucky now. We get triple uh, eight or triple S data um, off the Racing Queensland website, mm-hmm. um, and that actually gives the horses a microchipped, and so you can actually see how much distance they've covered, the exact time splits that they've run. So that's coming more and more into it. Um, do I head there and have a look? Yeah, most of the time, but... Uh, you know. Do you think overall times of races are important or not not so much? It's more about... Because obviously me, my limited knowledge of harness racing, I'm imagining the map is hugely important. Yes. Do yeah. people, like in racing, everyone's... Not everyone, but a lot of people are ratings mad, which is off overall time and sectional times and they convert them into ratings. Do they do that in harness racing? Yeah, I think it's all it's all adds into the mix, but um, race shape and race tempo and then map position. Um, I don't sort of rate one over the other. I kind of – it just Com- all goes into the puzzle, doesn't it? You know? Combine? Yeah. So are there ratings out there like you might have an over rating for the winner of 84, the second 82 for each race and each race has a, a number? Same as what they do in the horses or it's different? Yeah, I mean like if you're sitting in the pub, there's kind of those giddy-up ratings or – yeah, but that's just like an overall rating, yeah, though, not yeah. a not a race rating. Um, there are one or two subscription based um, right. ratings, but it's not as prevalent, obviously. No, it's not as um, you know. There's no database uh, subscription service, and there's no. No, it's very much un, uh, underutilized or under. Yeah, you know, there's not much in that space in the harness world. The other thing I wanted to ask you about the um, the speed map is how. How accurate – what percentage do you think you could predict the leader? Because often in, in horse racing there's no pace on paper and then, you know, a roughie might go forward and, you know, stuff the whole thing up. But is it like that as well in harness or is it quite predictable? Oh, look, I think it actually is quite predictable. On a normal 10-race card, um, I would feel like I'd be able to tell you who's leading at the bell, probably eight out of the 10 races. Right, that's pretty – that would be a lot higher than, I think, horse racing. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. I'm guessing horse racing, but it'd probably be seven or six, I would think. Yeah. I think with harness racing, you know, one of the beautiful things is we get the horses race so frequently, we get this really good sample size mm. and we overlay that. Our driver pool is, you know, it's quite small, generally speaking. So you really, you get to see the behaviours and the natural instincts of the drivers. So you overlay that with the horses that they're currently driving and you, and you get a pretty good feel for it. And do you feel like with, with the drivers, obviously the, how the ability of the driver is very important, like a jockey. Are you, would you be prepared to back a, jo- a driver of lesser ability if they are on a, a horse that you expect to lead because what they were required to do would be less than, say, they've, if they've got to come from well back in the field? Yeah, price dependent. Yeah. yeah. Price is everything, as we know. Um, look, I think, I suppose, I'm more looking for uh, driver switches where we've got, say, uh, uh, what I would, an average or bad or poor driver is coming off. Mm. The good drivers going on. Mm. I think that's the the switch you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And and the same in the horses. And you mentioned earlier about um, uh, horses that are held up for a run. You do a bit of video work as well. Mm. Yeah. You find it time consuming, or you, you love it? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But once you you know once you get in the zone, you get in the swing of things. You know, I'll it'll only take me an hour and a half, two hours to go go through a meeting. Yeah. Um, because you've already done all the previous work, so you're really only. Um, that's that run from the week before that you're adding when you're adding back into uh, to your memory bank basically. So yeah, um, yeah, you can zip through them once. Once being consistent is so important. All right, Ryan. Let's talk about the betting system that you pulled together for us students tonight. Obviously, it's very simple, and the idea is that anyone at home can do it and do it very easily. We used the Ladbrokes website or app to do it. Ladbrokes are on the den, so we want to um, give them a shout out and. And they've got all the tools we needed actually to, to put your point system together. And you also mentioned harness.org.au earlier. So that would be a great place for people to go. But for tonight, we just used the Ladbrokes site. We used their easy form, which I thought was pretty good. And also in their form, they have um, little icons that talk about factors that are, that are good for particular um, horses. So I'll just quickly run through. We've got seven factors in our point system. We've got drivers, 
trainers and then we've got barriers and then we've got track and distance and then we've also got market position and minimum price. And I'll go back to the start. You suggested that drivers is really important. I mean, obviously it is. Um, you suggested going to harness.org.au to find that out. You helped us out tonight and said, look, just go with Cam Hart as the best and Nathan Dawson and Greg Sugars um, as the second best. So we're going to award two points to Cam Hart and one each to Nathan Dawson and Greg Sugars. And I was able to go onto the Ladbroke site and minimise down to those riders, down to those drivers. So that, that made it pretty easy. Moving on to the trainers. Now, you do suggest that if people are doing their form on meetings other than tonight, that they do go and look at the better trainers at the different tracks and stuff. For tonight, you said don't bother because there's so many good trainers in the one spot because obviously the whole harness communities descended on Albion Park. So we didn't really worry about that tonight. We left it out as a factor, but it is important to always include it, isn't it, if you're doing form on a weaker meeting? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you're sort of, um, say, if you're going to do the form on a, like a regional type of track, you know, be like a Bathurst or a Redcliffe, um, having an idea of who those top two or three trainers are and also the top two or three drivers is a great starting point. Awesome. And then we move on to barriers. So obviously barriers is incredibly important in in harness, and you suggested that we should give two points for barrier one, one point for barrier two, and they're actually going to take points off for being um, second from the outside on the front row and minus two for being outside a front row. Can you just quickly tell us how the rows work in harness racing? So each track has their own configuration. The most generic um, setup that you'll see is probably seven across the front and three across the back. Um, barrier one is the coveted position that everyone wants. You know, you're already drawn on the rail. Um, everyone has to cross you to get a, get a, you know, to get a position in runs. So barrier one, statistically, at that probably 90-odd percent of the tracks around the nation would have the highest strike rate. So it definitely has to be um, bonused there. Outside front row, um, in my opinion, it's always the hardest spot to win from. Um, if you go back, you're all the way back last. If you go forward, you've got to spend a lot of petrol to get over. Yeah, cool. All right, then we move on to track and distance. And what I liked about... The way Ladbrokes do the form is this is where they throw up a couple of icons and when I was scrolling through the different horses, um, if a horse is a track and distance specialist, they throw up an icon that says exactly that. You can see it on the screen now. They also do it if it's just a track specialist or a distance specialist. So we gave two points if it was both a track and distance specialist and then one point if it was just a track specialist or a distance specialist. That kind of speaks for itself. The last one is quite interesting, is market position. So a favourite got two points and a second and third favourite got one point. Um, I might throw to the King Zone to talk a bit about that. I know why Ryan's doing it, but do you want to explain a little bit about why all punters in the world always respect the market, in particular the syndicates who are incredibly sophisticated? Am I right in saying that one of the last things the really, really sophisticated syndicates out there do is go and see what the market price is and that influences what they're... Overall. Yeah, it's not so much just about what the market price is, it's the fluctuations in, in the market. So whether whether or not the horse has been backed. So when you're betting on the harness I was looking before, like this, they're, they're putting the markets up early and you can tell when someone smarts back those horses, they would be tracking those fluctuations and seeing the movements, the sudden movements, maybe eight into five in one hit. Somebody smarts back that, whether they back it early, and they would be testing all those fluctuations to sort of get a guide of possibly when it, when certain stables bet as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not about just let's make the favourite, you know, let's make the favourite better or bonus the favourite. It's about the fluctuations inside the market, and on on um, on bigger markets, it's it's bet fair fluctuations as well. Mm -hmm. They'd be tracking all sorts of fluctuations anywhere they can get them. Did to you get want to a add guide. anything to that, Ryan? Yeah, no, I think um, having a good look at the flux and but still paying respect to market position is, I think, in harness racing, you know, it's it's sort of that tiered down. You, you need to know where the favourite is and where they're drawn. Yeah. And last rule was minimum price don't take less than $1.80. Or, um, yeah, I mean, speak to yourself really. You, just, you don't see a whole lot of value once you go beyond that. Is that right? Oh, no, I just think... Um, I think people that are coming across the harness racing, you know, from the gallop side of thing, you know, they're used to taking things that are three, four, five dollars in the market. Um, I think frustration levels can creep up there when you back something at a dollar forty. The expectation that it'll just bolt up. I yeah. saw Queen Alita got beat at dollar ten on uh, Friday night. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does happen. One eighteen into one oh eight. Mm. Wow. Look on her pre-series form and what she's done this year. Geez, she should not have been getting beaten. Yeah. Um, she was gifted the front. And she was flat as a biscuit the last hundred. So 
Yeah, I'm taking her on tonight. So you rule a line that if you, if you think something's a complete moral and you're getting 170, you do you bet then, or is that your rule, or it's just a rule for tonight? Look, if it's if it's 170, but you know the way the the price that I've framed in my mind is a dollar 30, well, I'm going to back it. You're going to bet, yeah, yeah, fair enough. I agree. So King's own. Yeah. Um, you're one of the you're the most experienced gambler in here. With all that information, how do you think us young students should bet tonight? What should be our off the point planning? system? Yeah. So what's your maximum bet? So we bag start is a thousand bucks between the four of us, and I've decided that um, we should bet to win four hundred dollars, but have a maximum bet of two hundred dollars. Bet to win four hundred, and your bag start is a thousand. Yeah. A thousand. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be losing more than two hundred on a race. So. Mm-hmm. If you're, I would go points five, which seems like it's your greatest. So points five or greater, I would go uh, to win 400 with a maximum bet of 200. Mm-hmm. I would eliminate any horses once you get over 60%. So in race two, uh, you've got the favourite five points, mm-hmm. but you've also got number number one would be a bet as well. But the favourite's around the $2.20 mark, number one's around the five fifty mark. So that percentage comes to over 60. I would cut it off at 60. So yeah. under 60, you'd, you'd, you'd back them both. And uh, 60, if it gets to 60, so you cut the one out in this instance because you're going, you're going over 60, you're at about 63% there. So don't worry about number one. But if, if, you, did, if you were going to back number one and the stake was greater than $200, you would... Re, uh, reduce both bets to the same proportion yep. so that you both came back to 200. Reduce them both by 20% or 30% sure. or whatever you had to so that you are then only investing 200 bucks on the, on the race because the biggest ma- mistake you can make is blowing out on one race. Yeah. And often if the percentage gets too high, it's not as great a race as you think either, $2.20 and 550 you're not leaving a lot there to – like something's got to be unders but – you know, it's hard. It's hard for more than one or two horses to be overs in the market. So limits are limits are so crucial. Big question is, what's your limits tonight? What are you doing? Have My you... limits are thousand bucks max bet. Yes, which I've had on the favourite in race two. Yes, and I'm going to lay a few on Betfair, and I'm going to lay them to lose two thousand. Let's fucking rip. I pinched in. a monkey in the first, and I've had a thousand on the fave in the second. Let's rip in. Let's go. The point system you, you in a race two threw up. Swayze um, at five points, clear from Pete said no at three and speak the truth at three points and then tis a sizzler, um, two points. So it, it feels like the smart thing for us to do here is to have a max bet of $200 on number five, Swayze. Ryan, do you want to tell us a bit about Swayze? Really interesting horse. Yeah, so he, he, he and Leap to Fame are half-brothers and they're the two favourites for the series. So... It's pretty unique. This horse is now trained by Jason Grimson, uh, coming to his care about April this year. He is undefeated in 11 starts and he's won the New Zealand Cup and the Blacks are fake. Um, he's pretty much taken all before him. The gate is a little sticky. Cam Hartz has said publicly he's going to punch through from the inside and basically come off at the first opportunity if he presents. So, but that's certainly much more appealing than perhaps dragging back and trying to, to come around the entire field. Um, look, Cam Hart's probably the best driver in Australia at the moment, so we'll back him in to get the job done. I heard that Swayze was a doubt to start in, into Dominion, and the price differential between Leap to Fame and Swayze before the heat started was sort of a dollar eighty Leap to Fame around four dollars fifty Swayze, and people saying that the four dollars fifty was because Swayze was doubtful, but. He's now raced and racing well and there's still that big gap in the market. What's doing there? Um, personally, I, I have them much closer together. Yeah. Um, I think the 450 is great shopping. Yeah. Whoever in the final draws best will start favourite. Uh-huh. Um, gamble responsibly, but uh, the 450 is a great starting point for, for anyone. And do you think it'll change much on what happens in this race right now? No, I don't think so. Um, look, there's always the chance here that Swayze won't get clear running and he'll... Uh, just be jogging to the line. Um, but in saying that, if he pops out, gets around him, destroys him, sitting parked, well, then they'll come for him. He's in strife now. Yeah. So this was always the danger by staying pegs. You would have preferred him to get out wide? Oh, yeah, but if he gets off here, it's all over. He's pushing. Oh. He's trying to get off here. Is he going to push he? off? He's not going to. Oh, he's off. He's off. He's, he's off. off. 
Beautiful. That's off? why he's the best driver in Australia. He's off. That's a big result there. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. He's looking a bit Look nice there for, for a couple of hundred metres, wasn't it? He's getting a beautiful smother. Will he sort of wait for someone to, to take off first and follow them, or do you reckon he'll take off himself? He'll he'll go now as soon as the three-wide line starts. Yep. He's pulling out now. There he goes. But he didn't go around to the breeze because Rock and Roll Do would have kicked up on him. Right, yep. Swayze's cool. Hit a bit of a flat spot there. Swayze's gone. Disappointing, eh? Oh. Leader. Bit Rogers. of a disappointing run, but he, he did all the work, didn't he? I, yeah, I remember listening no, to you on a, on a podcast the other day when you said that, you know, if you have to take off three wide and do that work, you're pretty cast. I, I'm pretty sure you said that the other day, didn't exactly, you? That's exactly. Yeah. That's, he's only really been but, beaten a length and a half there. Yeah. He's kept coming. But that was a prime example of it, wasn't it? Where he, he was going to map, though, he, wouldn't he always have to do that? As either you stuck on the fence, it would need a miracle run, or he'd have to do work. Yeah, but if you had have got off and got going and been up on, on the premises early enough, I think that would have been all the difference. Right. Do you find, I find in horse racing, um, horses that map poorly, they might be drawn inside and they get back at short odds like that at a $2.20, $2.30 mark, they need a lot of luck. You don't mind taking 10 to 1 about a horse that needs a lot of luck, but taking 220 about a horse like that, that is going to need a few things to go his way, may not be such a value bet. Do you have, do you, you have the same line of, th of thinking or not? Yeah, I think so. But in saying that, I think... The reason why we got black odds then was because of the tricky draw. Like if he had a draw right. on anywhere else, he probably would have been dollar sixty. Okay, so he's easily the best horse in the race. Yeah. So you weigh that up and yep. think two twenty, or not a bad price. Yeah. I'm gonna order some Uber Eats. What are we getting, Kingsa? Either China Diner or Ooh. delicious. Do you What's like the Chinese? other one we get down from um, Barangaroo? Oh, <laughs> Lotus. Lotus. And Kings, you, um, you're a humble person. You don't like to talk yourself up at all. But would you say that there's no one better in Australia at ordering Uber Eats than you? No one. Would you also say you're Uber Eats' number one customer in Australia? Oh, I'm up there. No, there'd be people better than me, but I'd, I'd certainly be in the top 1%. And have you uh, got the Uber Eats subscription, which gets you cheaper delivery fees and deals, or is that not up your alley, Kings? I delete it straight away. But <laughs> I do occasionally see them and I just delete it. Professor Spice, just before we um, finish off that race... Jason Grimson, is he kind of the Chris Waller of the harness world? Is that right? Um, he's probably not the Chris Waller because he doesn't have the volume of horses. He just has a bit of a boutique stable. I think he has about 16 or so. Mm -hmm. um, but it's chock full of quality and his results are second to none. Okay. And he has a, a, an amazing record in the big races? He sure does. Yeah. Uh, any big race staying trip, his horses have got an immaculate record. All right, Professor Spice, we're over to race three. And Better Eclipse is the favourite in the race. Can you tell us a little bit about Better Eclipse? Yeah, he is a wonderful horse. He's trained by Jess Tubbs and driven by her husband, Greg Sugars. He won a Chariots of Fire. He ran third in a Miracle Mile. He came up and won a Sunshine Sprint two winters ago. Um, he's right back in the zone now. He's had two prep runs for the series in Victoria. He just jogged in both times. Um, his mile heat was excellent. He went back initially, zipped round to the breeze and then was too strong for his rivals. He's a real versatile horse. He can, he can win with any race shape, in my opinion. His two main rivals here tonight are Turn It Up and Narano. Um, Turn It Up's got blazing gate speed. And one of the tricks is, though, is that perhaps Shane Graham will hand up again because he's just nursing this older horse who's got sort of like a... Um, he's always been managed in space between his runs. Him having four starts in two weeks, mm -hmm. um, there's always been a little bit of Shane's talked about nursing him through, getting him through, managing his workload through the series. So it won't surprise if Turn It Up does hand up rather than hold at all costs. Um, and then the question remains, who's he going to hand up to off the front line? And it's, it's a question without an answer. Yeah. So what's interesting here is that our system, our point system has thrown up, Turn It Up as the the five-point top raider for us, and it's two points clear of Better Eclipse. What do you think about better, of Better Eclipse as a betting proposition tonight? Yeah, well, I've taken 2.4. Um, I thought about even money was his right price. Um, it's a long way back for me tonight if he gets rolled. <laughs> so we're, we're going to stick true to our method and we're going to back, turn it up, 
King Zone, what are you going to do, mate? Are you going to? I'm having a thousand on the favourite. It's Ryan's best bet of the night. I know nothing about trots. Uh, I would rather be on leaders though, and this does get back, which worries me a little bit, as always. I hate being on back markers. I like leading the way, but I'm going with the professor. Yeah, and, in t- and, and in terms of the final, Ryan, is this race weaker to the previous heat or? Yeah, this race is missing one of the two big guns, so there's no leap to fame or Swayze here. Um, Narano is a stable mate of Swayze. He was excellent night one, but he is a sit sprinter. So if, uh, if Cam Hart kind of drives him like a big dog and puts him on the front end, um, it's not his usual pattern. He's got a kick. Narano. Nah. Oh, no, blackout for everyone. Not Narano. Wow. This isn't the start we wanted. No. What does that mean for Narano in the futures market for the final? I think he probably should be about $15, $16 mark. Is that yeah. like a winning chance with the right gate or just rough? Uh, geez, on his current form, you'd, you'd hard pressed to say that he can't win. But I think over the staying trip when the power's right down... Uh, leap to fame and Swayze or dominate. Yeah. We've seen that the Tab app has now got vision much, much faster than we had in the past. What implications would that have for in-play betting on harness racing? And, and is, there, uh, is there a lot in in-play betting in harness racing for punters? Richie, over the last 10 or so years, harness racing's really lost its position in the market share of how things have gone you know the greyhounds turnover is sort of headed towards 20 percent and you know harness racing but virtually harness racing and greyhound wagering turnover volumes have swapped places right um i actually think in play betting is sort of the great white hope for harness racing um you know our our races are two minutes or longer Mm -hmm. um we've now got this uh, fast feed through the tab app Mm -hmm. um the delay is more like two seconds so it's it's pretty good Mm. um I think, fingers crossed, if the WSPs can be incentivized to perhaps put minimum bet laws across their mm. in-play product mm-hmm. and I think a heavily reduced taxation zone for, for the in-play product so that they really put some resources into it and get their algorithms going and, and really beef it up, I think it can be the, the one thing that can really improve harness racing's uh, lot in life. So there's a, a real lack of representation from New Zealand in, in the Inter-Dominion. Why is that? I think it's two reasons, Richie. First is that the Inter is in this first few weeks of summertime and New Zealand's best horses have just come off running in the New Zealand Cup, which is the second Tuesday in November. So they've already kind of had just had their grand final. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one big factor. But without a doubt, um, it's the total prize money for the yeah. series. Um, look, if the grand final for the Pacers was worth $2 million, I'm pretty sure connections would be backing up. So let's talk about the prize money. So it's the Inter-Dominion is worth – the final's worth $500,000. What's the prize money tonight? Like if you win a heat, what do you get or nothing? It just counts towards the final. No, no. It's, uh, the heat money's not too bad. I think it's about 28 k per race. 28000 uh, 28000 yeah. Total okay. prize money per heat. Um, That's pretty uh, tiny. Yeah, but yeah. in harness racing terms, yeah. uh, Saturday Metro race, say at Menangle, is 20K. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in proportionally, it's sure. not too bad. Yeah. Um, but no, I think if we can get to, you know, at least a million dollar, in an ideal world, you had $2 million grand final for the Pacers, a million dollar grand final for the Trotters and 50K heats, that'd be pretty amazing. Yeah. And so that's a big reason why horses aren't coming from New Zealand, isn't it? Because it's a long way to go, a lot of yeah. travel costs, and then yeah, you know, what's first prize around three hundred thousand, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I, I, without a doubt, I think most people would agree that the winter in Queensland perhaps is the ideal spot for the Inter Dominion. Um, it just fits nicely with the carnival and the programming and the scheduling. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the years to come. And the New Zealand Cup, have you ever been to one? No, it's on the bucket Looks list. Looks epic, doesn't it? Oh, so it was yeah. on a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and do you know much about it? Like it's, it's all codes are covered, is that right? There's greyhounds, there's harness, and there's also yeah, horse racing? There's feature racing, I believe, for all three codes across that week. 
And yeah. also, I think um, there's this great race day called, I think it's called the Kaikoura Cup. Yeah. And that's that racetrack that's right by the sea. Yeah. People go and camp there. It looks pretty epic. Yeah. Brilliant. And what are some ideas to get the prize money up on the Inter Dominion? No one knows. Uh -huh. um, you know, the powers that be at HRA, I don't think too many people know what they're Well, if they can get turnover up, they'll get prize money up. Yeah. Sure. So they need to get turnover up and promote it a bit more. I think it used to be when I was eighteen to to for ten years. It used to be a big thing. The Inter Dominion, you yeah, know, it was absolutely. on because they promoted it. So it's all yeah. about promoting it the right way and then getting turnover up. This Maybe PVL is going to go back where he started. I don't Same. know. You said harness.org.au does a lot of good stuff, but do you think more companies need to put out quality data to attract the younger audience that is looking for that? Yeah, look, I've, you know, I've suggested to, uh, to HRA that basically a, a database type subscription service wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. You know, I think it has to come from internally. Yeah. Um, it's probably too big a project or task for private investors to get a hold of and do. Um, yeah, I think it could be a bit of a, if we build it, they will come. Yeah. Right, so we move to race four and it's, um, it's a very exciting race because Leap to Fame is racing the dominant favourite for the Inter-Dominion Pacers. Can you tell us a bit about Leap to Fame, Professor Ryan? Yeah, he's a great horse. He's a Queenslander, trained, by, trained and driven by Grant Dixon. He's by Better's Delight. He's a real staying powerhouse. He never shirks the task. I kind of, I haven't seen too many horses that just seem to have as big a will to win as what he does. Um, if you have a look at his last two starts, he's just jogged in without being asked for an effort, plugs in, Grant doesn't move. In two starts ago, so his last start before the series started, he took, I think it was 0.7 off the track record and he didn't flinch on him. Mm. So in my opinion, I think he is the best horse uh, in Australia. His gait speed is developing, which is really important. He was only what you'd describe as a moderate beginner off the arm. Um, he seems to be getting quicker, which is great. That means when he does draw well, he can capitalise and use it. Mm -hmm. Um, if he draws well in the final, uh, he'll start very, very, very short. How short? Dollar uh, forty. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if Swayze was a little disappointing in that earlier race. Yeah, I wouldn't be too disappointed with Swayze through that heat personally. Uh -huh. um, he was off the track, had to work off the inside. I think he was fine to the line. You know, that whole idea that the series is a chess game didn't want to have a monstrous gut buster. Sure. He still wants to have a horse in. Sure. 10 days time. Yeah, good point, good point. So the sad news for us students is if we are sensible students, which we want to be, we really can't play here because we've got equal first, our money rock, spirit of St. Louis and leap to, flame, leap to fame all on three points. So we have to put the cue in the rack and just watch you guys bet. Have you found a play for the race, Professor Ryan? Yes, I took uh, midweek, I took the dollar thirty-five that was on offer for leap to fame. I predicted or I thought felt he'd start super short um, and I'm also really keen here our money rocks the place which is from barrier one um, trading uh, lay side about a dollar sixty on the fair so I'm just going to wait be patient and see what it gets out to outstanding what about you king zone what are you going to do mate uh yeah I, I was going to lay the favorite just because it was a dollar 18 um with the good people at boom bet and I was laying it at 116 and then Ryan said, don't do that, it's a complete moral. So my position at the moment is I win $1.20 on uh, the champ leap to fame and every other horse wins me $1.13. So I'm sitting pretty at the moment. Wow. <laughs> Green book trading. I can't help myself. I have put up a lay at $1.14. Okay, so you will. So that's probably If I get it into the happen. shorts, I will lay it. So we'll come back to you later on. Come back. So Kingzo, what did you end up doing, son? I laid the favourite at 114. I couldn't help myself. How much did you get out of it? 10 to 1400 on. Oh! So the champs tracking up three deep on the back of Better Zip It. Yeah. Getting a great run? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Game on now. Chiming in the favourite. Wow. Oh. Fell in. <laughs> so it almost got the money. Well done, Ryan. Never in doubt. Fell in. <laughs> you expected it easier than that, surely. 
I must admit, I probably expected him to probably get up on, on pace before the bell and then he would have been waved on by. I think, once again, you talk about that, the, the attrition of the whole event. They don't want to belt them too hard, do they? Do you reckon he could have won by three or three, two lengths, say? Yes. That's Professor. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Like, if you, if you watch the replay, then Grant really asked for him with about on straightening and then with about 100 to go, he says, come on, mate. Were you ever worried? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, what is the situation with the driver weights? Are they displayed? Are they recorded pre and post race? What's the story? So very much unlike uh, the gallops, driver weights are not disclosed. Um, the barrier is generally the handicap in, in harness racing. Um, and then if we have a stand start race, uh, horses will go back certain distances depending on their, their past performances or how many wins they've had or what grade they are. So in theory, you could be 150 kilos and drive your horse. Um, now, I'd rather be pulling someone around that's 50 kilos yes. than uh, 150 kilos. Um, there's a bit of an old school of thought that weight doesn't really make that much of a difference, but I must say I totally disagree with that. Yeah, it doesn't sound right. Yeah. I, I do think, though, that... Result of the night. You agree to see. Continue, Professor. Yeah. I do think that... Uh, there's more like a, a, a power ratio that's important. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think the lighter you are, but the stronger you are. Yeah. So there's um, a balance. There is yeah. a balance. You know, you don't want to be 40 kilos and you can't hold the horse, steer them, or, you know, they get pulling all the time. That's, yeah. that's definitely bad. Yeah. But if you're lightweight and you've got full control of your horse... Um, you're in the sort of sweet spot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think there's this, unten- there's in- this intangible quality called run factor... Um, that we like to chat about between the boys. And it's really about how well horses go for you as a driver. Yeah. Um, and you see a driver like Cam Hart, he's just oozes run factor. Yeah. You're an aficionado with Chinese food. Can you talk us through each dish? I can. Don't hold back. We've got the beautiful spring rolls here. I think the chicken. We've got the uh, Peking duck pancakes. We've got the soup dumplings. Here we've got some the shumai. Shumai. We've got some more dumplings here. Then we go across to the mains. The wingers of the fried rice. Then we get into the white cut chicken, the crispy skin chicken, the beautiful prawns, and the hanger steak. Done. So we're moving to the trotters. Um, our system has thrown up Adele as the clear, clear top pick uh, with four points, two points clear of the dominant favourite, Queen Alida. Um, I notice there's been quite a lot of money for Adele. What were you making of the race, Ryan? I think this is a, a race that's got a recipe for a big boil over here. The, uh, the clear favourite currently is Queen Elida, the princess of uh, Australian trotting, but she was super flat night one, um, in my opinion. She did run second, but she didn't really fire to the line. Uh, she's a $1.50 tab and around $1.70 bet fare. I'm looking to take her on tonight. Um, the pole horse, Adele, driven by Nathan Dawson. Who knows how she's going to go scoring up here. Um, she's never drawn one on Australian soil. She's got the talent. If she can sit handy to the pace and stalk, she can certainly win. Um, there's a bit of a sectional superstar in this race, though. The very, very bottom one, number 12, Gus. Uh, I've backed him for a really good result. He's only having his 13th or 14th race start here, so he's very inexperienced. Um, if he goes away and does everything right, I'll be happy to tick that off, get a run for my money, so to speak. Um, But he's brilliant on the clock at his first heat and also at the trial leading into this series. So happy to find out at the huge price. Very good. So, yeah, we've we've backed Adele to win 400 bucks. And we might have something small on Gus as well just because you're tipping it. And why wouldn't we want to try and find out at 40 or 50 to 1? Sectional domination is what we're loving here. King Zone, what are you going to do, mate? Mate, I'm uh, trying to get the favourite in at the moment. Queen Alida, I got a little bit at 170 and I punched it out to 173. I couldn't help myself, but I'd throw a little bit on Gus as well. Oh! Yeah, look, Adele gallops. Who's that last? Is that Adele? No. Uh, we're, we're gone. It's all over. Uh, we're out. We're out, right? <laughs> it literally just went straight to yeah. the back. Adele did. Yeah. He galloped. You can't win. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, Gus he, will. He can, but, can't yeah. keep going like yeah. it's. Can the favourite keep going? Uh, yes, gonna but it's going to have to be good. The seven's trucking up a little bit. Was that him trucking up? Uh, Gus is kicking. He has kicked. Come on, Gus. Yeah. Come, Come on, Gus. Gussie. Come on, little Gus, eh? Holy smokes. Come on, Come on Gus. Kick Chantel. Oh, Come, on, go Gus. Go Gus, eh? Come on, Gus. Go, Gus. Come on, Gus. Oh, no. Oh. No. Olavici won. Yes. Woo. That'll do. We got the dollar forty shot beat, but yeah. <laughs> what a run from Gus. But I won. Gus. I thought that was Gus on the inside and the favourite on the outside. I was wrong twice. <laughs> wow. So talk us through that. Flabbergasted, really, that uh, such an inexperienced horse was put on the, you know, driven so aggressively. I, d- I just thought he'd be sitting out, smoking the pipe, come with one run. Um, fat result, the place there for me. I, uh, I'm grinning. Excellent. Um, Queen Alita got beat. I was half right. Yeah. Um, half the battle. Yeah. Yeah. Winning night now. Happy days. Yeah. Uh, Professor Spice, we've made our way to race six, the last race of the night for Wolfden University. And we've got Just Believe as the favourite. It's also the dominant favourite for the Inter-Dominion trotting final. And um, tell us a bit about this horse. And also, can you talk about, about it going, is it the elite loppet in Sweden that it just went and raced in? Yeah, so Just Believe is the defending Inter-Dominion champion. He swept the series last year. If he actually wins this heat tonight, he creates history. I believe he's the only, would be the only horse to have won six straight Inter Dominion races. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg Sugar's taking the drive for the same combination. His wife, Jess Tubbs, is the trainer. Uh, great trotter, full proof. He draws real sticky tonight. Uh, inside back row with Plymouth Chubb, who looks like he'll just scoot straight to the top. Uh, we're seeing a big drift here in the betting. It's not surprising they went up a dollar forty. He's now out to dollar eighty on the corpse, dollar ninety on the fair. Um, not shocked at all. Um, he, regardless of the result, he will still be the dominant favourite for the series. Um, the trick to him, though, is that after his Scandinavian trip mid-year to go a race, the best of the best. Uh, it's hard to argue that his two starts back on Australian soil. He's just not on the next level. Mm-hmm. And that race in Sweden, so he, he basically failed in Sweden, right? Uh, look, I must admit, I didn't watch any of the races live, but I think he had three starts over there, and I believe he made a small mistake in one of them. Okay. Um, whether that was the elite lop, I can't say. But I know he acquitted himself really well on a couple okay. of occasions. But is so. it a big, big rise in grade to the standard over there? Oh, it's it's. I believe it's next level over there. Yeah. Just their their breed and uh-huh. the speeds they run, and yeah, absolutely. And is Sweden the biggest harness racing nation in the world? Oh, it's it's really big over in all of Scandinavia. I'm I think um, yeah, I'm I'm no 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 expert on yeah. what happens over there. I know it's big in France as well. Uh-huh. Um, you know, yeah, Sky Two late at night. It's uh, looks very unique. So if we have a look at our point system, the student point system, um, we've got Plymouth Chubb on four points from Sir Fahrenheit on three and also Just Believe on three. (coughs) So there's a small edge there to Plymouth Chubb. We are going to have a maximum bet of $200. So we're all in on Plymouth Chubb. What are you going to do? I found it really hard to split uh, Plymouth Chubb and Just Believe. Um, One obviously drawing the front row, one inside back row. I have a slight lean to Plymouth Chubb just because Cam Hart's got the drive and he should be leading. But um, my angle in the race is Sir Fahrenheit, the drum. Uh, He should be able to stalk the speed here, get a rails trip, and I'm pretty keen he can run top three. Yeah, mate, uh, I love backing leaders. This is my better than night after listening to the professor Doing a bit of side form. This is my better than night, the chub. We're all going to go out on a nice big chubby. <laughs> Come on, chub, chub. Come. Ping out the chub. Yeah, yeah. Get over there, chub. Just believe straight off. It's a, it, it's a race now. 1-1. One, one. Oh, what a yes. race. 
digging the chub. What a great race. Come on, Chubby. Dig in the chub. Nah, it's gone. Nah. It's gone. Oh, no. Oh. Wow. 20 pair of 27s on the home for Trotters. That is a flying. Wow. Is it a, just a great drive on the favourite? On we- ju- yeah, just RI strikes excellent, again, eh? Excellent drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't put a ticket in. <laughs> <laughs> Most powerful force in racing. He took over the form. Well, that was quite something from Just Believe to park outside Plymouth Chubb, who uh, got a picnic for the first 1,000 metres and uh, he still couldn't get the job done. Uh, Just Believe is going to be prohibitive odds now for the series, you would imagine. Um, I can't see how they beat him in the final from yeah. what he's produced so far. He, I think he has gone to the, to, to the next level and he's obviously clearly the dominant trotter. And... Um, yeah, pair of twenty sevens on the way home. Rarely see that. Yeah. Have you done? Have you backed Just Believe for the final, or have you done anything on the final yet? Yeah, I took some evens um, after he resumed and was so dominant, beating Queen Alita at Bendigo. Um, yeah, I took some evens and I took some doubles. Uh, Just Believe into the two pacing favourites as well. So very happy. Yeah, awesome. And before we finish up, the paces. What did you make of the paces? Overall, and what what do you want to do in the final now? Uh, yeah, my opinion hasn't changed. Um, the favourite will still be determined by the barrier draw, whoever draws to run to the top. Um, I mean, I know Leap to Fame only sort of just got up tonight, but I believe the last mile was run in uh, 51 flat and a 26 flat quarter home. So off the track doing that, um, can't do much more, really. Yeah, personally. it doesn't, it doesn't so. look like the market's changed much at all. Still 175, Leap to Fame. Yeah. Four dollars fifty Swayze, eight dollars yeah. better Eclipse. So nothing's really changed. Yeah, I think you know if if you're still playing, you know, looking for a bet in that market, that's, the gap's still too big. Um, uh-huh. I reckon it should be maybe Swayze three dollars, leap to fame evens type yeah. of thing. Yeah. So your suggested bet there would be Swayze. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right, mate. Well, thank you very much for coming down. Very insightful. Unfortunately, uh, the students didn't win. The, the other students are going to blame me for that and my mock abilities. Kingsane, how did you finish up, mate? Did me money, but had a great time. Unreal. Learned a lot. Yeah. A, lot of the, a lot of the um, same principles in horse racing apply in harness racing, I would think. Yeah. So, but learned a lot and uh, had a lot of fun. Small loser. Queen Alita was my only, re- only good result. But mm. um, I will continue to bet over this series from home. Students, anything you'd like to say to the professor? Uh, just thank you for your help. It was, it was a great ride. <laughs> good for you to get Gus home at 40s for a hole, but well done. Thank you. And... Uh, Big shout out to Chantel Turpin for sneaking Gus into a place. Yeah. Thank you very much, mate. Really appreciate coming down. Very kind of you. Yes. Very gracious. Great for harness racing. Um, they're lucky to have you to care so much and get out there and try and give it the push that you're trying to give it. Thank you. Cheers.